At just 16, alpine ski racer Alice Robinson went to the Winter Olympics, becoming New Zealand's youngest ever Winter Olympian. But even before that, her teenage years were not like most kids going to parties and hangouts, but busy with travel and racing at an international level where she achieved extraordinary success. She was the first female free skier since the 1980s to win three World Cups before turning 20. She's smashing all sorts of records, and yes, she is only 20. Still, along the way, she's faced huge challenges and proved she can come back from adversity. From bone bruising injuries to being sidelined after catching COVID-19 to missing podium placings by seconds, the road has not been easy. Alice bravely posted on social media about how tough things have been mentally for her during the COVID pandemic, facing quarantine in a chaotic two years. Her perseverance, though, has paid off. And now she's eyeing up the Beijing Winter Olympics. She joins me now. Thank you for joining me, Alice. Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, you're in Italy right now. You've had a busy few months. How are you going? Yeah, yeah. It's been kind of a crazy few months. I'm like halfway, kind of been overseas for three months now, which has been crazy. But um, kind of feel like I haven't raced that much because the season's kind of just starting to pick up now. But yeah, it's been an interesting couple of weeks with getting COVID and missing races after having some success and now kind of trying to build back into it before going to Beijing. Yeah, a huge couple of months. Talk us through that. So you got COVID, you were midway through a competition and you had to withdraw a couple of races? Yeah, so um, I'd kind of, the season we kind of just started, I'd done like um, like three races, I think, and had like a career best fourth place in the Super G discipline for me, which was really exciting. And then the day after that, I got back to my base in Italy and where it wasn't feeling 100% and a few of my staff members had tested positive for COVID but I'd been negative over the weekend and then did a test on the day after and it was positive so then kind of had to go into shutdown for 10 days and just sit at home and um, luckily I wasn't super sick but had like a cold and just a bit tired and um, but the worst was kind of having to sit out for 10 days and missing three competitions which was really gutting. Yeah and being on your own in a hotel room I mean how did you cope with it? I mean, it was lucky. I have an apartment in Italy, so um, I was just in my apartment and I was with my physio because she was positive as well. So we were kind of just <laughs> sitting in gloom together, but um, it was still, yeah, pretty tough just having to sit around and kind of, it's like hard to kind of keep positive thoughts sometimes when you're sitting with COVID missing competitions. Yeah. And especially because as you say, you started a brand new discipline called the Super G and you've done, as you say, your career best fourth place after such a, you know, a busy and rough year. So that must have been super tough. Talk us about this new discipline. Why did you decide to start something completely new? Um, yeah, so I kind of I started I've always kind of eyed up doing Super G, but it's kind of something I wanted to bring in when I was a little bit older. And um, I just yeah, it's kind of the progression, I guess, for athletes in our sport is to kind of start doing, you know, multiple disciplines when they kind of get a bit more. Um, experience and that's kind of what I started doing so I started racing Super G a little bit last year and it was kind of had some okay results I had like one top 10 and then um, but it's always been my goal to kind of get that Super G to the same level as my GS skiing and so um, it's been a bit of a process but kind of finally all clicked um, and I got a fourth place which is really exciting. So exciting and Super G is all about speed 130 kilometers an hour how, I mean honestly yes. I can't even think <laughs> I can't even I can't even think about how that feels is that scary? Yeah um, I remember the first, when I first started doing it I mean I was all, I've always been a pretty adrenaline like thrill seeker I would say <laughs> like I've always loved going really fast and you know doing like bungee jumps and stuff like that I've always never had much fear um, so I've always loved doing it and it's a pretty epic feeling when you're kind of going down these mountains and you're going really fast it's kind of like when you're driving in a car and you stick your head out the window that's kind of like the feeling you get wow. so I mean I, I love it but it's um there is definitely some nerves involved when you're going at those speeds and yeah. there's been you know a lot of ter- a lot of terrible crashes and a lot of terrible injuries that have come out of it but I mean it's just you don't really think about it when you're doing it you kind of that's just you kind of have to if you want to do well you can't think about consequences you just gotta go yeah. for it that's a real mindset isn't it one of your past yeah. coaches said that you were the complete package in an athlete which is a huge compliment he, he said you've got incredible mental toughness and a will to win I mean that must be cool to hear that yeah no that's really nice to hear and I think I mean I don't know if I'd just call myself like the full package but um, it's cool nice when someone someone says that about you I guess so growing up, tell me how it all began, because did you just suddenly decide, hey, I'm going to go down a mountain really fast? 
Yeah, so uh, well, I was actually born in Sydney. So my parents are from Sydney and we moved to Queenstown when I was four. Um, and I grew, worked, started skiing when I was three on like a family holiday from Sydney and Queenstown, just at Coronet. And um, my parents yeah, weren't really big skiers or anything, but they just put us in the ski school because they were like, why not? When we moved to Queenstown, they were like, kids might as well be decent skiers seeing we like live so close and it's on our doorstep. So they just put us into like the normal ski school. And then um, when I was eight, I decided that I, I saw some kids, you know, skiing around in the race suits. Like I've kind of mentioned a few times and I was like, those just look so cool. Wait, so really you thinking, like the like, ski suits? <laughs> yeah, just the race suits. I just love them. But I mean, I always loved skiing, like growing up, even though I wasn't racing, I loved going up on the mountain and things like that. And um, I think I was always a big motivator for me going up the mountain because we always got to like get hot chips and stuff like that. So, there's, you know, always, the always loved on the hot the chips. I love it. Yeah, literally. And then um, so I said to them, I was like, oh, like I'd quite like to do the ski racing program. And they were like, oh, yeah, like, why not? Like, we'll, we'll support you doing it. And I think if they knew like what it would have turned out to be, I don't know. <laughs> like they were very sure what they were getting themselves into. But I mean, it's pretty fun looking back on it now and how it all started. And so when did you realize that you were actually really good at it? Um, I'm not sure. I think, um, I guess I started like winning kind of national kids stuff in New Zealand when I was like nine or 10. Um, so I thought, you know, like, oh, like maybe I'm quite good in New Zealand. And then um, I went over to America when I was younger and started kind of winning the stuff over there. And I think I probably thought I was quite good <laughs> when I was like 14 and I won up. Um, this competition called Whistler Cup, which is this big international kids competition um, in Canada with a lot of different nations. And I think, yeah, I won that. And then I was like, oh, maybe this is like something I could do. But um, I mean, I when I was younger, I always was just wanted to be an athlete. Like I didn't know what sport it was going to be in yet. But like when I was a little kid, I just always knew that I wanted to win. I think I, my dream was always to win Olympic medal, but I didn't know what it was going to be in. But that was just what I wanted to do. <laughs> So it sounds like you were always pretty driven and you always had a goal, right? Even from the start, you sort yeah. of dreamed, did you? Or you did, was that your dream to go to the Olympics? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I probably, initially, I probably didn't think it was going to be in ski racing. I probably pictured myself as a little kid, like doing a sprint or something, but <laughs> I always wanted to go to go to the Olympics. And then you went when you were 16 years old. That must have been pretty daunting. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was so, so crazy because, um, like, in our sport, you don't, that was my first year in, like, what they call, like, the open age group. So I went from racing in, like, under 16, so kind of all the kids stuff. And then within six months, I was kind of propelled into, like, racing on the World Cup and getting, got selected to the Olympics and only found out I was going, like, 10 days before. So it was just a massive whirlwind. And I remember we were in Europe at Junior World Championships and then we got the call up that I'd been selected and had to leave, like, 10 days later. And it was just crazy and got over there and it was just you know an awesome experience but yeah very daunting and a lot going on and a lot a lot to process in a short amount of time especially at such a young age and how do you deal with it like how do you get over those nerves um I think you know I've kind of struggled sometimes it kind of depends on how I feel going into the race and you know confidence levels and stuff like that if I feel like I'm not prepared or I'm not feeling like very confident then I kind of get nervous but if I feel like I've prepared well and you know done all the work that I can then I can go in there you know thinking I've done everything I possibly can to be in the best position and that's all you can really do so that's kind of how I try and manage it and have you got a big support crew around you always and that helps yeah yeah I mean that's something that my team's amazing and my coaches are amazing and um like my parents and my family my friends are always just like a FaceTime call away which is nice but that's another thing that's been hard with COVID is not having the like I haven't had any family been able to watch me for two years now, which is just nuts. Um, and, yeah, not being able to be at any of my competitions. It must be really, really hard. And, you know, you talked on social media about how you've struggled with homesickness, missing your family and your support mm -hmm. because of you having yeah. able to travel. How, how hard has that been the last couple of years for you? Yeah, it's been crazy. Like um, thinking back on it, um, last year I went overseas, I was 18 and I think it was when Auckland went into lockdown for the second time last, like with the first or last year. And I said to my parents and I was just kind of a young 18 year old. And I was like, guys, like I've got to go, I've, just, I've got to go to Europe and just get it, get on with it. Like the whole, like, you know, even though we were kind of stuck, like not doing anything in New Zealand, I was like, oh, the rest of the kind of competition and all my competitors are over there doing it and the season's going to happen. So I have to go over there. And they were like a bit nervous, but, you know, fully supported me. And I went over there for nine months and, 
um, I had like six months off skiing because of COVID um, going into that season and couldn't train or anything. It was just because my coaches couldn't get here and it was just so tough mentally kind of um, going into that season on like the back foot and being overseas for such long amounts of time. I was just, you know, so exhausted and just wanted to kind of go home and just have a, you couldn't really, I couldn't get away from it because it was just in my face all the time and it was really tough and not being able to like, you know, just give your mum a hug or something like that was really, really tricky. But um, I think it kind of builds character and it built, built a lot of resilience. So like kind of now um, I feel like nothing really phases me that much because I feel like I've kind of gone through it all. So I've kind of come out of it stronger, I think. Which is so good. So, I mean, because it sounds yeah. really, really tough and I can imagine how hard that would have been. Yeah. But as you say, there has been some positives to come out of that. It's like you're Teflon yeah. now. Nothing can touch you. You're really much stronger. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel much, yeah. ment- much more mentally strong? Yeah, I think for sure, um, you know, I've had to, you know, grow up quite fast, I think, and especially kind of, you know, going through COVID by myself as a young adult, it's been difficult to kind of manage, like, every. it's just all so new for everyone, and this, you know, the the days just, you know, things change daily, especially over here with competitions and stuff like that with COVID, so I think it's just kind of taught me to be really adaptable and to not let sweat the small stuff, and it kind of puts things into perspective on what you should really be worrying about, so I think in that respect, it's been a really big kind of learning experience the last two years and it might have you know affected my results in the, at the time but I think down the track it's going to help me be like a better athlete oh that's so good to hear and talking about growing yeah. up I, I feel like you may have missed a few parties as a teenager do you feel like you <laughs> missed out on having those typical teenage years I mean there's definitely like aspects that I miss like you know kind of like the new year's parties and festivals and stuff like that I definitely um and having you know summers and things like that and I definitely missed out on but I feel like I was really lucky that um my high school and I had an awesome group of friends that um you know I'd go away for you know four months over the winter and would miss like the first term of school pretty much but then I would just come back to my school and like all my friends like really supported what I was doing and um but they weren't like super fussed about it which was super nice to me because I'd go you know being in Europe and being in this really intense competitive um, environment all the time and then being able to come home to New Zealand and just slot right into my local high school and you know my friends would be like oh how's skiing going and then we just like wouldn't even have to talk about it for months which was just perfect for me and I could just fully zone out and just be a normal kid and um, get back into the schoolwork and go to the school formals and hang out with my buddies it was really nice to have that balance and to have that kind of break to just be a normal kid as well. Oh that sounds really good. And what about yeah. those winters? I mean, do you miss summer? You chase winters. Do you <laughs> do you miss having this, having a bit of vitamin D on you? Uh, absolutely. I really miss the summers. Um, and, you know, things like, um, you know, like Christmas time and New Year's is always tough because I really miss that, like, summer Christmas. And, um, you know, I grew up, you know, playing sports outside on Christmas Day and, you know, being in the sun. And now my Christmas is kind of consists of, like, training and travel. <laughs> so... It's not quite as fun as it used to be but I mean it's just kind of the sacrifices you have to make but um, I definitely do miss the summers and getting getting to kind of thaw out of it. Yeah and I noticed on social media also you're always really humble with your congratulations to your competitors uh, and the camaraderie is really good. Is it What is it like between the competitors over there? Yeah you know it's actually um, it's actually a really nice environment you know like there's no kind of I think everyone really respects what the other competitors are doing, which is really nice. And there's definitely competitiveness, but um, I think, you know, all the girls like support one another and there's no, you know, big rivalries or, well, there is rivalries, but there's no big like beef between competitors and everyone's friendly because, you know, we're traveling around with like these people at competitions every weekend. So we see each other all the time. So like we might as well be friendly. So there's, you know, a few girls that, you know, we're all buddies, like we're all friends and, um, you know, if we're having a bad day, you know, even people like Michaela Schiffer and she's, you know, sat me down before and, you know, given me advice and encouragement and stuff like that, which is really nice to have that kind of environment. But um, I mean, it's still a competitive environment and there's still, you know, we're all wanting to beat each other, but it's nice that we can all get along and support each other <laughs> off, off the slopes at times. Oh, that's really nice to hear. So what advice would you give to young girls like you that see you and think, wow, maybe I could do the same? What advice would you give to them? Uh, I would say, you know, just have fun with what you're doing at the time and, um, you know, enjoy it. And, you know, if you wanted to succeed, you just have to, you know, work hard, believe in yourself and, 
just um you know that was my biggest thing is just believe in yourself you know there's especially being from New Zealand there's a lot of people that were you know thought it wouldn't be possible for me to kind of do well in this sport because it's you know not really one that's built for people from the southern hemisphere and I just you know always would say like well I'm going to do it anyway and I think that's something you have to kind of tell yourself is like you know just believe in yourself and just why can't you do it so I'd say that to young people is just it's all about self-belief and just to work hard and believe in yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love how you said have fun because, you you know, you sort of forget, but you it sounds like you actually love skiing. You still love skiing. Yeah. And that's really important to love it and have fun, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then you're just going to be miserable. So you've got to make sure that you're enjoying it. Have there been times though that you've, I mean, you must be at times going, oh gosh, I really am over the skiing. I don't feel, I don't feel it at the moment. I mean, you must have days like that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, like if you're kind of like in a rut, like a bit like I was last year, um, you know, if you've, especially our sport can just be so brutal at times because like the margin for error is just, you know, pretty much zero. So, you know, one, like there's times, you know, you lose your focus for like, a quarter of a second and you kind of don't put the pressure on your skis at the exact right point in the time and it can result in a crash or you're blowing out of the course and there's no reruns there's no second chances and that's really tough I think at times to um you know get over and um so stuff like that you know I've had times where I've had two races in a row that I've crashed or something like that and it's because of you know just tiny kind of error and or like a moment lap lapse of concentration and times like that you know I'm just like god I hate this sport <laughs> like it's just so <laughs> tough I just and you know and we're also every time we compete we're on a different like there's just so many variables that are out of our control at times and I think that's something that can be really tough mentally to get your head around and there's definitely times where I've just been like oh god I hate this like this sport is so hard but I mean, what do you say to yourself to pick yourself up what do you say mentally to yourself I think you just got to like keep pushing and then, you know, and then one day it'll, it'll all go really well and you have a good result and then you're like, okay, that was worth it. You know, it's kind of, you can have 10 bad days, but then one good day and it kind of makes it worth it. Oh, that's so good to hear. And so coming up, let's talk about the future. You've got the Beijing Olympics coming up. Yeah. 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 Heading to Beijing. I think it, we're leaving in like under a month now. So I think we fly out on like the 25th to 27th of January or something. So it's coming up really, really fast and it's, yeah, I can't believe we're already kind of nearly there, but it's super exciting and it's um, going to be interesting, I think, this year and there's, I think it's going to be quite a different Olympics to the last ones, but I'm just excited to get out there and start comp to compete. Yeah, and what are your goals for the Winter Olympics? Um, I think, you know, my goal would be to get a medal, sure, um, and I think, I'm, it's a, you know, it's a good, I'm a contender for it, but, you know, it's still like a lot of... Um, anything can happen on the day so I'm just kind of trying to just be in the best position I can when I get there and just enjoy it and try and ski the best I can and that's all I can really do yeah and can your family come to the Beijing Olympics are we allowed visitors? no no there's no outside spectators from um, outside China allowed to go so everyone's just going to be cheering at home from home oh it's so which tough is, which is kind of yeah which is kind of normal like the last two years <laughs> haven't been able to have any kind of people at races watching me so um, it's just kind of normal but they're there. I know they're there in spirit <laughs> we'll be cheering you on from home don't you worry yeah. and what about the future I mean you're 20 now you're achieving these amazing results what do you think about the future yeah well I mean um, in our sport I guess you know people kind of ski till they're like 30 or so so I'm just going to kind of keep pushing and um, what we kind of focus on in our sport is like the world cup circuit every year and then we have world championships every two years so it's just kind of, yeah, pushing, just keep pushing every year and just see how, what I can do and what results I can get. That's fantastic. And then what about after 30? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, God, I've not thought that far before. <laughs> <laughs> you are only 20. You've got a few years yeah. to think about it. I mean, I'd, yeah, I mean, I definitely, um, I think I'll probably start, I'll probably start doing some papers at university soon to start stimulating the brain again and then, um see see where it takes me but yeah a bit of time yeah. to kind of there's figure out what I want to do after there's yeah. enough going on for you right now I think Alice Robinson thank <laughs> you so much for joining me and all the best for those upcoming races we will be following you thank you thank you thanks for having me